Hello everyone. So, a little while ago I asked y'all to send me some flag designs for the moons of the solar system. And y'all sent me about 150 flag designs. What I have to do, basically, is for each moon that you guys sent multiple designs for, I'm gonna have to narrow it down to my absolute favorites and talk about those. But I will at least put all of them on the screen, at least. So, there you go. Uh, so let's begin, and we'll go in order uh, from closest to the Sun to the furthest from the Sun. So, let's start with the first planetary system from the Sun, Mercury, which does not have any moons. So let's move on to the next one, Venus, which does not have any moons either. So let's move on to the next one, Earth, and I know this one definitely does have a moon, because it's called the Moon. Here we go. Carl sent me this flag that he designed for the Moon. He was partially inspired by the unofficial Mars flag that's being used by the Mars Society. And we'll get to that flag, by the way, in just a moment here. Uh, the three colors that Carl put on his flag are red, gray, and gold. The red sort of representing the space race. It was a very active, a very intense period in lunar exploration. Uh, the gray representing the gray period, according to him, that we're kind of going through now because no one has been to the Moon since 1972. Uh, but the gold represents the bright future that he sees in lunar exploration to come. Daniel sent in this flag for the moon, and it's pretty easy to understand, but my favorite parts are the 12 stars, which represent the 12 people who have so far been the only people to go to the moon, and the uh, human footprint you can see on the bottom center of the flag, which of course represents Neil Armstrong being the first guy to do it. I like the simplicity and just obviousness of this design that Lewis sent in. I like how it looks. Uh, it's super simple. It's like, oh, that's the flag of the moon. Uh, but I don't like that it's astronomically inaccurate, according to his description. Uh, okay, he said the black background represents space, and the white represents the sun, and the black represents the moon. Um, the moon isn't crescent-shaped. The moon is round. The moon is... The moon is a sphere. That's not what it would look like if the moon was in front of the sun. If you just change the description to say, it's the moon in its gibbous phase, and it's just got a white outline for no reason, then that would be astronomically okay. And I could, and I could, and, and I could chill. But my favorite flag for the Earth's moon was designed by Krilly Boy. His design here just looks awesome. Uh, the black represents space, the white represents the moon, and the orange represents vitality, adventure, and the hope for future moon colonization. And those six stars in particular I really like because they represent the six times that humans have landed on the moon. Just the overall layout of this design, it's just super unique, I love it. Uh, it's my favorite one. Good job, Curly Boy. You win for the moon, the Earth's moon in particular. Also, I don't really count these, but they're kind of funny to me. Uh, Vexillology Hub made these two flags, one for if the moon was communist, and one for if the moon was fascist. Like an alternate history kind of thing. Uh, the designs are kind of cool, actually. Uh, anyway, here are all your other flags for the Earth's moon, and now let's move on to the next planetary system, Mars. Johanna designed this flag for Mars's moon Phobos, which is only slightly bigger in size than the other moon, Deimos. Uh, she included two circles in her design to represent those two moons, but in particular for Phobos, she included these seven red rectangles. The red, of course, is a reference to Mars because it's the red planet, but there are seven of them because Phobos's diameter is about seven miles. A lot of you guys sent in flags that were meant to go as a pair for Phobos and Deimos, which makes sense, I guess. Uh, so this pair was designed by someone with the nickname Penguin. Uh, these flags have a black and white color scheme, and that's not just because they're a penguin. It's also because uh, the black represents the void of space, and the white represents the stars. You can see the astronomical symbol for the planet Mars in the upper left corner, the canton of these flags, and in the fly of these flags you can see an astronomical symbol for that particular moon. Phobos, Deimos. Uh, I like how these look, but my absolute favorite pair of uh, Phobos Demos flags came from Saul. Saul used the unofficial Mars flag uh, that is being used by the Mars Society that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so this is the unofficial Mars flag. Uh, it's got a red, green, and blue tricolor. And so Saul took these colors and he made these awesome looking designs using the first letter of the moon's name in the Greek alphabet because these are Greek names for these two moons, Phobos Demos. And they look so cool together! It's a reference to the planet with those uh, red, green, blue colors, and... Ah! I love them! I love them! Nice job, Saul. These are my favorite for the whole Martian system that I got. Nice job. Anyway, here are all the other Mars moon flags you guys made, and now let us move on to Ceres. Ceres is our first dwarf planet, and it doesn't actually have any moons. So let's move on to... Ida. Ida. What? 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 
Ida actually is not a planet or a dwarf planet. It is an asteroid in the asteroid belt, which actually has its own little tiny moon. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay, so this little moon is called Dactyl, uh, and only one person designed a flag for this tiny little asteroid moon, uh, and that guy was Individual 746B. Uh, can I call you Indy? Indy. Indy, uh, Indy designed this flag with a black background representing space. Uh, the brown shape on the bottom represents Ida, of course, and the brown shape in the middle, that heptagon, uh, represents Dactyl itself. You've got the silver color, which represents iron, which is thought to possibly be located on Dactyl and Ida, which could be useful if we ever have to start asteroid mining someday. Uh, and all these dashes uh, over there, all those dashes, uh, according to Indy, uh, represent the asteroid belt. Uh, and Indy says there are 243 of those dashes to represent Ida's official designation in astronomy, 243 Ida, its official designated name. Um, Indy, you only included 230 dashes. Uh, I counted. Uh, 10 times 23 is, is uh, 230. You missed 13 of them. Um, not that I would recommend it, because that's really complicated for a flag design, but you get mentioned because it was the only flag that anyone designed for Dactyl. Uh, it, you got some cool stuff on the flag, though, other than that. Uh, anyway, let's move on to our next actual planet, Jupiter. Raoul sent me this flag for Jupiter's tiny moon Amalthea, and I like how this flag turned out. The design looks nice, the layout looks nice. He says that the colors represent the colors of Jupiter, and the star in the center represents our solar system. However, uh, either Raoul stole the star from the flag of Ethiopia to make this flag, or he's making a prophecy. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the nation of Ethiopia's space program will one day get so much funding that they will start colonizing other worlds, and they will go to Amalthea, colonize it for Addis Ababa, and they will rename the moon Amalthiopia and give it this flag. I got one flag designed for Jupiter's outer moon, Kalirawi, designed by Den. Okay, um, the red apparently is because that Kalirui in a photograph looks reddish to Den. Uh, the white star represents purity, the color blue represents calmness, and the fist does not represent PewDiePie has a gun breath. Uh, it represents strength, apparently. Um, he didn't include any explanation as to those trippy white uh, spirograph looking thingies. Um, so there you go, the only flag I got for Kalirui. I got a couple flags for Jupiter's larger moon, Callisto. Uh, this one was apparently inspired by the flag of Brazil, but this one's my favorite, by uh, Bartek. Uh, the brown represents the surface of Callisto, the black is for the craters of Callisto, the orange is for Jupiter, and the blue is for the ocean of water that might exist under Callisto's surface. Europa was the most popular Jupiter moon that I got flags for, so here are my favorites for Europa. Uh, this one was designed by Carl. Uh, the blue circle with the white outline represents the water ocean underneath the icy surface of Europa. The four stripes in the background represent the four Galilean moons, and of course the orange shape on the left represents Jupiter. Uh, I love the layout of this design. I really like how this simple, minimalist, bicolor design represents the ocean of water underneath Europa's crust. Uh, and it was apparently inspired by the flag of Poland, so Poland can into space, everyone. But my absolute favorite flag for Europa was sent in by Vega. Okay, look at this thing. It's so cool. Okay, so you of course have the uh, water underneath the crust, uh, that you know, with the white and the blue and the waves and everything. But you also have this uh, diagonal orange stripe, uh, which resembles the orange crevices and cracks all over uh, Europa's uh, surface, which looks really cool. Uh, and also you have this orange star in the upper left, which represents the planet Jupiter. The symbolism is all there, but I just love the design especially. It, 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 oh man, it's so good. It makes the most out of just three colors. Uh, ah, awesome flag, Vega. Thank you for sending it in. And now Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. Uh, this blue area here on Carson's flag represents the saltwater ocean that might exist under Ganymede's surface. The white represents Ganymede's atmosphere, and the red uh, with the star on it is supposed to represent Aldebaran, the nearest red giant star to the solar system. I have no idea what that's supposed to do with Ganymede, but yeah. But my favorite design for Ganymede came from Hugo. Hugo was inspired by the Christmas Island flag uh, to make the design diagonally divided. Uh, the blue also represents that saltwater ocean that might exist. Also, the uh, yellow circle in the upper left represents Jupiter, and the nine black circles inside that circle represent the fact that Ganymede is the ninth largest celestial body in the entire solar system. That's even bigger than the planet Mercury. 
Then there's the moon Io, which is really weird with all the volcanoes, and it, it just looks weird. It's just weird. A weird moon. Uh, and this flag, designed by Ethan, is also kind of weird, and I kind of like that. Uh, it's got this red-black-red tricolor, which is already kind of odd, but in addition to that, you've got these shapes on the top and bottom. On the top you have this curved one representing Jupiter, and on the bottom you have these sort of triangles representing volcanoes shooting out lava and sulfur. Uh, it, it's kind of like what it might look like from Io's surface. Uh, it's just a weird-looking flag but it's simple enough and symbolic enough that I really like it. I also got this amazing Io flag design from Samuel. Okay, so he included not only colors from the planet Jupiter, but also the colors that you can see on the surface of Io on his flag, and especially the yellow, which represents sulfur, which is like on most of Io's surface. Uh, but also, this red disc here, this red circle, has multiple meanings that he threw in. Not only is it shaped like Io, it's also a reference to the Great Red Spot, that enormous storm that's been going on on Jupiter for like at least hundreds of years. Uh, but also, if you look at the red stripe combined with the red disc at the same time, you can see it sort of subliminally spells out the name Io. That was genius, Samuel. That was brilliant. But I also got another Io flag that I like just a little bit more. Um, this is a really hard decision. Uh, this one by Niels is my favorite Io flag that I got. I just love the layout. He uses the same colors pretty much, uh, but just the layout, it's so symmetrical, but it's weird with, with the wavy stripe representing uh, magma flows. Uh, and the uh, the white half disc in the sky, sort of representing Jupiter in the sky of Io. It, I don't know, I just love the design. It's a great design. I love it. Oh, man. And I even got one flag for Jupiter's tiny moon Themisto. Uh, this was designed by Nigu, and he used a lot of mathematics to determine the sizes of things in this flag. Uh, for example, the uh, height-to-width proportions of this flag were determined by him based on a, this mathematical equation relating to the orbital period of Themisto around Jupiter, which is amazing. Uh, also, uh, this central stripe uh, with the colors of Jupiter on it uh, is one-ninth of the width of the flag. Uh, which represents the fact that Themisto, in order of distance from Jupiter, is ninth. Uh, also, there's a picture of Themisto in the center. And here are all the other flags you designed for the Jupiter system. And by the way, check out these uh, four Galilean moon flags designed by Prodigium. Uh, they're not like my absolute favorites, but I do like this weird orange Canton thing that he included in all of them. That's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next planetary system, Saturn. I got a few different designs for the really interesting moon Enceladus, so here are my two favorites for that one. This one was designed by Individual746b, there's that lovely name again. Uh, you can see the white circle in the center representing Enceladus, of course, and its icy surface, but also in the background you can see this representation of Saturn and its rings. Uh, which is really cool how the rings sort of form this irregular, non-rectangular flag shape that he used. That's a really clever and a cool idea. And my favorite Enceladus flag was this one from Necti. Uh, his flag has a white background representing the icy white surface, and the blue represents the possibility of water on Enceladus, which would be really cool because green, uh, it could sustain life, possibly, if we ever need to colonize that area of the solar system. And now we have another weird-looking moon, Iapetus, which not only has this weird bulge around its equator, just kind of sticking out, this weird ridge thing, huh? Uh, but also you have these really bright colors uh, right next to these really dark colors, this, these splotches. It's really weird-looking moon, uh, and you guys included a lot of these features in your flag designs. Uh, for example, Ian Curtis's flag uh, it references this two-tonedness uh, with the white and the black, and this gray stripe in the middle of the circle represents the ridge on the equator, uh, which is really cool. By the way, check out Ian Curtis's channel if you want to see lots of cool flag designs for lots of different stuff. He does a pretty good job. This design by Rasmus references the ridge with that stripe in the middle, but that's also a reference to Saturn's rings. You can also see the yellow color representing Saturn itself, and the white and black representing Iapetus. And my favorite one was this one, designed by Roman. Uh, he basically just used different shades of gray to represent the characteristics of Iapetus. You've got the bright side and the dark side, and you've got that, those stripes in the middle representing the equatorial ridge. It's super simple, and it's all just different kinds of gray. It's brilliant! Uh, I love it. It's super simple. It's, it's a really good design. Roman also sent in this really bad design for Iapetus. I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> Uh, those former, former flag of Pocatello, Idaho references. 
Uh, great. <laughs> I got one flag for Saturn's moon Methone. It was sent in by Wilbert, but his description just said that uh, light blue, yellow, and red are his favorite colors, and that's his uh, zodiac constellation, apparently. Uh, he didn't include anything about Methone in his description, so... I also got one flag for the tiny moon Mundulfari, if I am saying that right. Uh, this was sent in by Blutark. Uh, the black represents space, the little gray thing is the moon Mundulfari, and the big orange thing is Saturn. I got one flag design sent in for the really weird looking moon Pan, uh, but this is a really cool flag actually. It was also designed by Indy, he's back with a new design everyone. Uh, okay, so the gold represents the planet Saturn, and the white represents the icy rings of Saturn. Now this is important because Pan is one of those so-called shepherd moons, uh, these tiny moons of Saturn that use their gravity basically to keep the shape of Saturn's rings in place. It's a really weird, fascinating effect, uh, and because Pan is one of these shepherd moons, uh, uh, it's named after one of the gods of shepherds in Greek mythology, uh, also named Pan. And that's why there's a goat's head uh, to represent Pan. Uh, he apparently had horns, and he apparently had a thing for things with horns. And I also got one flag for the moon Tethys, designed by Niels, uh, and he included this little indentation you can see in the left, that little, that little gap there, uh, to represent the enormous crater Odysseus. And now the big one, Titan. Okay, so this guy nicknamed the Random Hat sort of made up this alternate history, future history kind of thing called the United Republic of Titan, which wasn't exactly what I was going for, but the flag he made looks really cool. I especially like that symbol he included on the left. Uh, it's supposed to resemble a scythe, which was a symbol of Kronos, who in Greek mythology was the leader of the Titans. Clever. I really like the design and symbolism of this next one, uh, designed by Bud. Okay, so the orange represents Titan's atmosphere, and the black represents the rivers and lakes of methane that are all over the moon Titan. Uh, but the overall design is really interesting. He sort of has this, like, futuristic uh, space travel concept in mind, with Titan sort of being, like, the midway, like, halfway point where you, like, stop and refuel or something. Uh, it's so, so, like, the diagonal lines represent, like, the inner solar system, and then you have Titan, and then you have the distant outer solar system. That's a really cool idea, and I love how the flag design turned out. But my absolute favorite flag for Titan was this one designed by Ice Prince 20. Okay, let's go, let's go through this. Okay, the, the orange color represents Titan's atmosphere. The blue represents the methane lakes all over Titan's surface. But then you have these, like, white curves and lines. What do those represent? So you'll notice that the curves and the lines combine to form the letter T. Uh, but it forms the letter T twice. Why is that? Because Titan is the second largest moon in the solar system. That's nice, but the final finishing touch is the fact that these the curves of these white shapes represent the rings of Saturn. That is brilliant. It's genius. Oh, oh man, why didn't I come up with that? That is, that is so good. Uh, it, it's like the flag of Toronto, Canada, but with better colors and just cooler. It's, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, let's move on to planet number seven. Uranus. Brendan sent in this flag for the moon Ariel. The black stripes represent space, the blue stripe represents Uranus, and you can see this circular thing going around the stripe that represents the orbit of Ariel around Uranus. But my favorite clever part uh, is that the uh, orbit thing is tilted 51 degrees because Ariel was discovered in 1851. Uranus's moon, Mab, is really, really small, and it's only like 30 miles across, but I did actually get a flag for it. Uh, Salvadorian Productions sent me this flag design, and... <sighs> then there's the moon, Puck. Uh, Blake sent me this flag for the moon, Puck. It's pretty simple. Black background for space, there's Uranus over there, and there's Puck orbiting Uranus. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And now we have Uranus's largest moon called Titania. This flag was designed by Niels, and it's pretty clever. Okay, so you have the blue, of course, representing Uranus, the gray representing Titania, orbiting Uranus, but in the background, you can see the flag of England. What's up with that? Okay, so Titania. Uh, she was the Queen of the Fairies, a pretty big character in the Shakespeare play A Midsummer Night's Dream. And of course, that's an English play, uh, so Niels threw in the flag of England as a reference to that. That's pretty clever. Nice job. 
But before we leave the Uranus system, I gotta talk about these four flags that Prodigium designed uh, for four of Uranus's moons, Ariel, Oberon, Titania, and Umbriel. So what he did was he assigned each of these moons a symbolic color, and he made these four, like, uniform matching flags uh, of the same style, using each moon's uh, color that he gave them, uh, but they are all this unusual swallowtail shape instead of a rectangular shape. Why the unusual shape? Because Uranus is unusual because it it sort of tilts and rotates on its side, like at 90 degrees, instead of all the other planets. That's really cool, and I just like how they look together. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next planet. Neptune. I got one flag for the tiny moon Larissa. This was sent in by Nigu, and he uh, also, like he did with the Misto, he also made some crazy calculations for the proportions of the flag. Uh, but this one is also pretty clever, too. Uh, so he, of course, has the blue for Neptune, black for outer space, and white for the moon Larissa. Uh, but uh, the way he calculated where that stripe should be was pretty clever. Okay, so he divided the flag into 14 imaginary stripes, and he took the fifth imaginary stripe from the top, and he made that the white stripe representing Larissa. Why did he do that? Number 5 out of 14. Uh, because out of the 14 moons that we know Neptune has so far, uh, Larissa is the fifth closest to Neptune itself. And now we have Neptune's largest moon, Triton. This flag was sent in by Samuel, and it is brilliant. Okay, of course, the blue represents the planet Neptune, and the black represents outer space, and the uh, sort of central light blue circle represents the moon Triton itself. But this emblem in the middle uh, it is full of, like, three different symbolisms at the same time. Three different meanings. Okay, so one meaning uh, is that you can see these three sort of prongs coming off of the uh, surface of the moon. That is a reference to the trident. It sort of resembles the trident, that fork-looking thing that the Greek god Triton carried around with him all over the place. So that's cool. Uh, but also, uh, these sort of three streaks uh, can re represent the, uh, the geysers on Triton's surface that shoot nitrogen into space. Well, that's brilliant. But finally, my favorite part is sort of the effect it has visually on the flag. It kind of makes it look like the moon, the, the circle representing Triton, is going the opposite direction that the flag is waving. Um, that is brilliant because it's a reference to the retrograde orbit that Triton has around the planet Neptune. Basically, okay, so most moons in the solar system orbit their parent planet in the same direction that their parent planet rotates. But Triton doesn't do that. Triton's a rebel, and it orbits Neptune the other direction that Neptune rotates. Now, this was a really hard decision, guys, but I think my favorite Triton flag was this one sent in from Peter. And no, it's not me, it's some other guy named Peter. Alright, so there's the blue background with these white stripes that represents the planet Neptune, and I think that's really cool because you can every now and then see white clouds passing by on Neptune's uh, atmosphere. Then you have this big white circle representing the surface of a Triton covered in nitrogen ice, and then you have this blue area inside. Uh, and especially there's this thin blue outline. Uh, that represents the very thin, thin atmosphere that Triton has. In the middle of this uh, blue area, you can see another reference to Triton's trident, uh, the pointy one this time. And the little points on the prongs are little triangles, and these triangles also double uh, as representing the geysers on Triton's surface that shoot out nitrogen. So that's really cool. Uh, all that symbolism located on the flag with just two colors, and the flag's overall layout and design just looks super cool. It looks awesome, it looks uh, sleek and suave, it, it's, it just looks like a great, great flag. Nicely done. Okay, we're done with the planets, now let's move on to the outer dwarf planets, starting with... Pluto. Let's start with Pluto's largest moon, Charon. Now, you may know that Charon was named after the fairy man uh, who would, in Greek mythology, take the recently deceased souls down the river Styx in his boat uh, to the underworld. It's a charming little story in Greek mythology. And uh, this design from Trolls incorporates many elements of that story. Uh, so, of course, you got the skull representing death. Then you've got the oars that he would use to row uh, his boat. And speaking of the boat, uh, this crescent shape that is formed by these two circles uh, sort of forms a boat-looking shape. Uh, so there you go. Uh, also, these two circles are, are so similar in size, which is a reference to how uh, Charon and Pluto are so similar in size to each other. Uh, and in fact, they're so close in size to each other that they sort of orbit each other in, the, in space. It's really weird. Uh, also, the black background represents space, and the white color represents the very, very, very low temperature on Sharon. Uh, nice flag, Trolls. Very nice, nice, adorable, <laughs> charming flag, Trolls. It can also double as the flag of the Plutonian space pirates. Arr. 
This design was sent in by Ethan. Uh, it's got this heart shape going on, which is a reference to the heart shape on Pluto's surface. Uh, and then you have this pointy part of the heart, which is supposed to sort of resemble the shape of the New Horizons spacecraft, which was the first spacecraft to do a flyby of the Pluto and Charon system back in 2015. That was so cool. Those first pictures were so cool. Uh, and then the negative space in between these purple shapes sort of makes this Pac-Man looking uh, shape, which resembles the letter C for Charon. Uh, and of course, uh, there's this purple color, uh, and that's supposed to represent this particular splotch on Sharon's surface with a purplish-reddish color to it. But easily, my favorite flag that I got for Sharon was this one sent in by Simon. It is so cool. Okay, there's so much good stuff in here. Uh, so let's start with the background of the flag. About 40% of it is blue, and about 60% of it is black. And according to Simon, that's because about 40% of Sharon's surface is covered with ice, and about 60% of the surface is covered in stone. Uh, and then, of course, you have the proportions of the flag, which he threw in some cool mathematics into. Uh, so the, the, the ratio of the width of the flag to the length of the flag is the same ratio as the diameter of Charon to the diameter of Pluto. That's a cool idea. Uh, and then, of course, you've got these symbols in the upper left. You've got this seven-pointed star, which is a reference to the date that it was announced to the world that Sharon had been discovered, and that was the 7th of July, 1978. And then, of course, you have the boat, which, of course, is the boat that the ferryman in Greek mythology used to take all the dead souls down to the underworld. Nice little story. But man, this flag is so cool. I love how it's composed. It's, ah, oh, it's a great flag design. And before we move on to the next dwarf planet, I have to talk about these five flags uh, that Jacob sent in for all five moons of Pluto. And all of these flags sort of work together and they and flow together sort of as a family, and they look really cool together. Uh, so each of these flags has the astronomical symbol of Pluto in the hoist in white, and the background is black, and each one uh, has some sort of symbol or shape representing something about that moon. Uh, so let's start with his Sharon flag. Uh, this yellow circle is supposed to represent the golden coin that the dead people had to pay to the ferryman uh, to take them down the river Styx to the underworld. Seems kind of unfair to me. They just died. Why make them pay for a ferry ride? But anyway, uh, speaking of the river Styx also, uh, there is a moon of Pluto called Styx. Uh, and of course, he represents the river with a blue stripe on it. And the river apparently leads into this marshland in the, the mythological story. Uh, so he represents that with a green stripe. Pluto's moon Kerberos was named after that weird monster thing in Greek mythology with the three dog heads. Uh, and those three dog heads are represented by these three red points on this star. And that little green outline around one of the points is representing the serpent tail of this monster thing. Then there's the moon Nyx, which was named after the Greek goddess of the night. So to represent the night, uh, Jacob threw in a crescent moon shape there. And finally, my favorite one was this flag he designed for the moon Hydra, which of course was named after the Hydra of Greek mythology. Uh, so these purple stripes represent all those freaky necks and heads of the mythological Hydra. Uh, it's a weird creature thing, but this flag looks so cool! I love how it's sort of a mix of, like, Pluto and the Seychelles <laughs> together. It looks so awesome. I love this flag design. Anyway, uh, that's enough of the Pluto system. Let's move on to the next dwarf planet, Haumea. And this flag was designed by Pastelkos, if I'm saying that right. Uh, it represents the entire moon system of Haumea. Now, the dwarf planet Haumea is actually shaped like an oval, uh, so that's why there's that big white oval shape in the center that represents Haumea. And then there are these two green circles on the left and right, representing the two moons, Hi'iaka and Namaka. Now, what's with the green color? Well, the green is a reference to the islands of Hawaii, believe it or not, uh, and that's because that's where all these names came from. Uh, the dwarf planet Haumea was named after the Hawaiian goddess of fertility because that's where the dwarf planet was discovered. Uh, Haumea was discovered by scientists at the Mauna Kea Observatory on the island of Hawaii. Uh, so they named it after the goddess of fertility, and they named the two moons, Hi'iaka and Namaka, after Haumea's mythological daughters. And that's where the names came from, and that's basically what this flag represents. Uh, it's a nice simple design with some cool facts hidden in it. And beyond Haumea, there are two more officially recognized dwarf planets in our solar system. There's Makimaki and Eris. And they both have moons, but no one sent me any flag designs for them. So that means I can stop. <laughs> this video finally can come to an end. Thank you guys so much for sending me all the moon flags. Uh, here's all the other ones, by the way, that didn't quite fit into the categories, uh, all the other flags that you guys sent in. This was really fun to talk about vexillology and astronomy in the same video. 
Anyway, this was really fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay awesome and have an awesome day. Bye.